Sweet Springs Church. We are so glad you're here today with us. And uh, I know it's a little different, but we are excited about our time together this morning, regardless of the avenue or the method that we're using. We're so glad you're here with us. Yes, thank you so much for inviting us into your home and into your life today. And man, we just want to encourage you. Uh, we are going to have music. We're going to sing. Eric's going to share the word. And we just want you to worship with us right where you are today. Yeah, I'd, I'd encourage all you families to gather together. Uh, dads, go get your kids and pull them out of bed or whatever. I know it may be <laughs> kind of a different morning, but uh, get your families together. Uh, why right. don't you just take a minute right now even to text some of your friends, maybe guys that you've tried to get to come to church with you or even people out there that you can call and or shoot a message real quick and tell them to come and join us That's in our right. worship time today together. And uh, we're, again, we're excited about what's happening today. And uh, even though, again, we, we find that we're in a different time right now, uh, we want you to reach out to as many people as you can. That's right. Man, if you are not a part of the body at Beach Springs, we just welcome you this morning. Uh, thank you for allowing us, as I said, into your home as well. And, yeah, call all your family and your friends. Yeah. We're going to give a couple minutes so you can get them all notified and uh we're we, just excited we, have, this uh, we have prayer partners out there. We have people that are manning our phones. Uh, right. You can call here at the church. I know that information will be on the screen. Also, we have uh, some folks that are manning our Facebook feed. Uh, so you can interact with them there as yeah. well. If you got needs, if you got prayer needs out there today, or maybe God's just doing something in your life, you'd like a, like a point of, of contact or place where faith can be joined, uh, we have people out there ready right now for you That's to right. join with them. And uh, again, we're excited. This is a day the Lord's made, and this is a <laughs> yes, good day. Yes, we're going to rejoice. And, Thank and you, even Lord. though we're in times that may be challenging and uh, crisis maybe we've never been through before, but again, we just encourage you today to know with the reality that Jesus is the same. That's Nothing right. has changed. That's right. And uh, again, he, listen, heaven is not surprised today. <laughs> and uh, we just Thank encourage you, you to find that as a reality in your life. Again, take a moment right now as we're going to start our, our time together in prayer. But again, reach out to people even now and encourage them. Say, hey, let's yes. find hope together today. And uh, we know that in that, God's going to use your life to touch somebody else. Let's pray together. Father, thank you, I Lord. thank you for this day. Yes, I thank Lord. you, Lord, that you have given us. We're you have good, blessed Lord. us. And, Lord, Thank you have you, given this opportunity through the airways today. We take over, and we know today that we meet with you, that everything and in everything we do today, we are, we are joined with heaven today. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Lord, in this time, as we minister, Lord, let people receive of you. I ask you, Lord, that, that words are formed in heaven and even uttered over these lips today, Lord, that words would be from heaven that encourage people and inspire people that instill hope in people and lord we know today that as we have come together lord you'll meet us here god again breathe through us let the spirit of god lead and guide us and always let jesus be glorified of course in his name and everybody said amen come on worship with us we're going to sing and worship together I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my dream Jesus, till I met you
morning come on do you know that God never changes come on he never changes he's still good and his promises still stand day after day come on he won't stop even though the things around us may shut down and may stop come on he does not he does not in Jesus name thank you Lord oh we worship you Jesus Open. 
experience his presence all you got to do is open up your heart right where you're at whether you're with family or right beside or even alone if you just call on the name of Jesus he will meet you where you are thank you Lord I know a breakthrough is coming Lord As I said in just, a, just a moment ago in the song, you can experience God right where you're at, right now. Call on his name and he will meet you where you're at. You know, if you're not familiar with the church or never really have been, you've probably at one time or another heard the 23rd Psalm. It's where David is lamenting over talking about walking through the valley of the shadow of death. He ends that psalm by saying, surely God's goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever you can make that commitment today if you just call on his name and God's goodness and mercy will follow you everywhere you go the rest of your life come on sing wherever you are
so good. Lift our voice to you. Yeah, you've been so good. Yes, you have. All my life, you have been faithful. Yes, you have. Day after day. All my life, you have been so, so good. So with every Sing it together once more. Say all my life. Come on, proclaim his goodness. All my life you have been faithful. Come on, just know the goodness of God this morning, yeah. All my life you have been so, so good. Oh, yeah. So with every breath that I am made, oh, I will sing. Of the goodness. Come on, will you sing this? Sing your goodness. Come on, say it this morning. Your goodness. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Yeah. Your goodness is running after. It's running after you this morning. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give. running after me. Come on, one more time. Say your goodness. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. No matter where I am. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Oh, it's yours. Your goodness is running out. It's, it's running out to me. Lord, we thank you so much for your goodness and your grace and your mercy, Lord, that you pour out on us day after day after day. God, no matter what situation or what circumstance we're in, Lord, no matter how far we've run away from you, God, you still are there. All we have to do is turn. Turn to you, God, and there you are waiting, Lord, to pour out your goodness and your grace and your mercy and your blessing upon our lives. God, I pray this morning, Lord, wherever people are, whether they're in their homes, Lord, whether they're at work or in their car, God, wherever they may be, that you would just let them know your goodness and your mercy in their life this morning. Lord, as your presence has filled the place where they are, God, just wrap them in your goodness, wrap them in your love. Lord, let people be changed this morning by your presence, by your goodness and your mercy. Lord, we worship you. We thank you for who you are. God, we thank you for the opportunity just to worship you this morning. Lord, just to thank you, Lord, for how good you've been to us. We worship you, Lord. You are so good. You are so good, and we thank you, Lord, for who you are, for what you've done, and what you're going to do this morning in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm the student pastor here at the church, and we just want to let you know that due to health reasons and just your safety, uh, the events over the next few weeks are going to be canceled or postponed. Uh, we'll let you know when those things are back up and running. Also, we want to give you the opportunity to give here this morning right at your house. We have three different ways that you can do that. First of all, you can visit our website at beachsprings.org and can give there. Secondly, you can download the Beach Springs Church app from the App Store or the Play Store if you're an Android user. And then lastly, you can text the give at the number that's here on the screen. Uh, we just want to make, give you the opportunity uh, just to give here at the church and to continue to um, do ministry here. And then lastly, um, we're excited about you being here with us today. It's going to be an awesome time. We know that God's already touching your heart. Let's listen in to what Pastor Eric has for us today through the Word. Yeah, we can say together, he has been good to all of us. And again, I appreciate the guys that lead us in worship and all the guys are working in different spaces, technically, and even the prayer lines and all. We just, again, we want to encourage you. You know that uh, we have never uh, quite experienced anything like this, not in my lifetime, and I don't think any lifetime, but thank God again for the capabilities we have to still gather as best we can and Again, I said it Wednesday night, and I continue to say it. We've never passed this way before. We've never 
been here before. So again, remember, service is 11 a.m. It's until we find a different time or, or any changes that we need to make. Service is 11 a.m. on Sundays. Uh, that'll be the live stream and 7 on Wednesday. Also, our Edge Youth, they will be ministering uh, through Instagram at Edge Youth 1 on Wednesday nights at 7. Our Beach Kids Ministry Sundays at 6. So uh, you can pick them up. And again, we're so thrilled you are with us today. We uh, want to just take a minute to encourage you again. I know that this is a time, and I want to go back to something real quick that I shared Wednesday night. Uh, I think in the middle of this crisis, we can all see and we can all believe that this is not the first time this planet Earth has experienced crisis. And uh, again, I, I said it a little while ago, I think I don't think heaven's surprised. I think that uh, God knows exactly where he wants us to be and how he leads us, so we will trust him. Uh, but I just thought Wednesday night, I, I, I was saying to some of them, I believe God just nudged me uh, sometime during the middle of the week and said, you know, there was a time that uh, my followers were crunched in crisis, and I was reminded uh, of the weekend that we celebrate real soon. Uh, I, I know that uh, we know it is Easter weekend and Holy Week that leads right up to it. And uh, I, I was just reminded on that Friday when the events of the crucifixion took place uh, and then into that Saturday and then Easter Sunday morning, I was just reminded of this. And I want to share this with you again because I believe this is something that we all need to hear and we can all receive and we can all have faith working in our life to bring us maybe to a place that maybe we've not been before. But, but I said this, if you, if you consider the Gospels and the story that we read there, about the best we know about the disciples and, and what took place in their life or what they did on that Friday afternoon, man, you're talking about crisis. About the only thing we're told is they, they went and they gathered and prepared for the Sabbath. We're told that some of them prepared the spices because it was a Sabbath. Uh, that Friday evening, the Sabbath began. And, and, and in that time, I can't help but in my mind, I just believe that this was just a, something that God encouraged me with. In my mind, I'm thinking that Friday evening into Saturday, man, they're so discouraged. Uh, they are so filled with fear. Uh, they, they, they look at themselves, and, and I said this, there are three things that you can consider there in, in that gathering of those followers of Jesus then, and it's something I think we're, in some ways, we can relate to now, because you can definitely see where there were certainly knowns that the disciples were dealing with. In other words, they had seen, they had witnessed Jesus' crucifixion, they had witnessed him breathing his last, uh, that they had seen him wrapped in a cloth and put in a put into a, a tomb a barred tomb and the stone sealed it shut uh, those those were things that were known so those were things that they had firsthand experienced then I think you can follow this with me too and again I just want to encourage you with this there there are a lot of things that in that time you could say that were unknowns in their life there were, there were things that, man, they had questions about. They were, uh, consider that Saturday, again, that Friday, Jesus is crucified that Saturday. There are all kinds of questions. Uh, I, I said the other night, there certainly they were at a place they had to be asking what just happened. Uh, the unknowns, considering the fact that they had seen Jesus heal the sick, they had witnessed Jesus raise the dead, and in that now they have all these questions about Jesus, uh, his death on the cross. And, and you know what? I think that that's kind of where we are right now. I think one of the things that as a society we're dealing with as much as anything as far as the, the crisis is this. There's so many unknowns. And, and there, this is not the first time that has happened, that people live in that place. And those disciples and the followers of Jesus say, dealing with those unknowns. But I want you to see this more than anything. I want you to see not only the knowns, the unknowns, but I want you to see the reality. Because the reality was that even though that, that at that place of questioning, even though they're at that place that they've seen, the knowns, the unknowns, they have 
all these questions, it does not change their reality. Because their reality was that they were just, on that Friday evening when the sun set, they were just a couple of days from the greatest event in human history. And in that, there is that place that their reality is just as real on Friday night and on Saturday morning as it was on Sunday morning. See, that's where I think it kind of gets tricky. You see, I, I think that sometimes our reality, I think we can easily miss or we can confuse because their, their reality was, as again, as I stated, that Sunday morning was on the way. They, they had seen the facts. They, even though there were unknowns, and, and that's kind of where it gets tricky, I know and I understand, but, but again, what is their reality on Saturday? What is their reality on Friday evening? What, what, are, what are the facts? Because I ask this question, are the facts not really facts until they happen? And again, that's, I know it, it's kind of sticky or tricky there, but I'm just saying that maybe there's a place that we realize facts are the same whether they've happened or not. Whether we've seen them, whether we've witnessed them. Are, are they facts only when they happen or are they simply sealed for the appointed time and place in our future and in our destiny? So I think that even now we can consider that our reality is fixed, that what God can do in and through this crisis is our reality. I, I, I think, let me ask it this way. Is your, is your paycheck a reality when you're in the middle of the toll of your work week? Is it a reality then just as well as it is the day, the payday, or the day that you get your check? Or it's dropped in your account? And you may say, well, yeah, that, that's similar, but that's all in good faith. But isn't that what we live? Our good faith in knowing that God is working this thing for our good? That even though we're in the middle of crisis, our reality is, is on that Saturday, on that Friday night, even though it was Friday, Sunday was coming, and I'm just saying to you that wherever you are, I want to encourage you to know that God, listen, God, even though we are in this crisis that we're in, that we can know that God is working something greater, that he's working something better. In Numbers 23, it says that God's not a man that he could lie, nor the son of man that he can deceive. If he said it, he will do it. And my word tells me, the Bible tells me that God is always working for good and he can turn this thing around. And even though we see it as something bad and destructive, God can turn it and use it for our good. Out of this crisis, I believe that God is going to do some great things. And I just encourage you to know that in your family. You say, but pastor, we're in this place. We don't know. We don't know what we're going to face. We don't know what's going to happen. I know there are tons of unknowns, but I'm just saying, would you just hold on to your reality? And that reality is just as good today as the day you receive it. And that is God will work something better and greater. He will work it for your good. You can hold on to that as a word from the Lord. Out of this crisis, God will do something even better. And I want you to set your mind on those things. Set your mind on what's good. Because you can know today, listen, Proverbs, the writer says in Proverbs, uh, Proverbs chapter 4, he said, be, be careful what you think on. He said, be careful what you think because your thoughts will run your life. And, and let's be careful during this time that we don't allow our thoughts to so be filled with so, such, such pessimism and such negativity that we don't see out of this place that we're in. Man, I just encourage you to find that as real in your life. You may be in a Saturday afternoon that you don't know what's going to happen, but your reality is, is God's on the throne and he will work through this time and he can still produce something greater. I've been in this thing on Sundays. I've been teaching along the line this thought why all the noise and as we continue in that thought this morning again I just wanted to take a minute to encourage you and to build you and to let you know that God still is leading us and he can direct us through this time I, 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 I've been taking time to look at this and I think man it's kind of a 
Kind of fitting, isn't it? I mean, I, I said it the other night, I can't wait to the time that we can come together corporately again and our corporate worship. I can't wait to that day where we're able to peg that particular Sunday or that first gathering that we're able to experience together. And uh, man, there's nothing like the corporate worship when we can come together, one mind, one heart, and, and one accord that we can find that place in our life. But, but as I talk about this thing, I've been reading this quote that kind of, kind of, kind of affected me in a way that it, it, it actually initiated this, it initiated this, this small sermon series that I'm doing right now. But, 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 but this writer, he said this, he said, he said, why, why, what is the big deal about all the singing in church? He said, I don't know about you, but I didn't expect to be joining the local congregational choir when I signed up to follow Jesus. I'm reading this and I'm thinking, man, I wonder if people feel that way. He said, he said, after attending church for some time, I was still confused. He said, I get the value of meeting together with others. I get the value of listening to a message or a sermon or whatever you call it. He said, I even get the value of giving and serving and getting involved. But he said this, why all the Christian sing-alongs? Why the Christian karaoke? And I thought, man, I wonder if there are people that maybe that are out there that maybe sit with us that wonder why all this noise? What's the big deal? Now, another, another writer, he, he wrote it this way. He said, why do we come here to worship Sunday after Sunday, 52 days a year for 5, 10, maybe even 30 years, even a, even a whole lifetime? I mean, getting up early on Sunday morning, getting ready, getting the children dressed, driving to church in all sorts of weather, sometimes not feeling too well ourselves, angry at the government, maybe with current concerns about our own health or our own financial problems. But now on our best behavior, walking into the building, greeting friends, singing songs, lots of them, we serve, we pray, we pray prayers, we read scripture, we, we listen to sermons, we bring our offerings, we even take of the bread and the cup, and, and we call it worship. But he said, but why do we do this? Why do we make so big a deal about Jesus. I think that if we're honest, there are probably a lot of people that wonder that. And maybe even as followers of Jesus, we don't understand completely why we do what we do. I found that in life, there are a lot of people that they would invite Jesus in as company. But I found that even with that, there are a lot of people that don't realize that we're not just inviting him as company, we want him to stay. We want him to stay with us. I think the passage that I'm going to read this morning maybe can bring us even a little more clarity in terms of why we do what we do. This is Palm Sunday, Luke chapter 19. I'm going to begin reading about verse 28, but as I read there, I want you to see with me that I think there's some things said there that maybe help us to understand why maybe we even face resistance or Maybe the hesitation when it comes to our life given in worship, even our praise, our celebration, the songs that we sing. But I want you to see it with me, verse 28. It says that when Jesus has said this, he went on ahead, or when he had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass that when he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany, that at the Mount of called Olivet, that, that he sent two of his disciples, saying, you go into the village opposite, opposite you, where as you enter, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Boy, there's a, there's a teaching right there, isn't it? Aren't you glad that Jesus will come in and calm the things that are wild in your life? It says the colt had never been ridden on. He has all authority. And he says to them, he says, you loose it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you loosing it? 
thus you shall, shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. So, so those who were sent, they went, away, went their way and found it just as Jesus had said to them. But as they were loosing the colt, the owners of, the, of it said to them, why are you loosing the colt, colt? And they said to them, they said, the Lord has need of him. And then they brought him to Jesus and they threw their own clothes on the colt and they set Jesus on him. And as he went, as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then as, as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, that the whole multitude of disciples, they began to rejoice and they began to praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, blessed is he, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And then some of the Pharisees, they called to him from the crowd and said, teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, that the stones would immediately cry out. And now as he drew near, he saw the city and he wept over it. And I'm going to stop reading right there. And I just think from the story this morning, I think that we can consider this question again this morning, why all the noise? And I just want to touch on just a few things this morning for you to be able to take with you and consider in your own life in terms of your own life that is given to worship, that is given to honor and to glorify God. Jesus, he made this statement there. He said, if they are silent, even the stones will cry out in praise and honor and celebration. And, and I want you to know that even the heavens, they still declare the goodness and the glory of God. And it is our privilege and opportunity that we can join in with all of creation and sing the song and and make sure that as we as God's people that we celebrate the goodness and the greatness of the God that we serve. But you know well as I do that even today we experience, I think, some opposition when it comes to the worship of God. When it comes to celebrating our God, our Father, His Son, Jesus, and certainly the Holy Spirit that enables us. I think that we still today understand, we see that there's still opposition. I love the story, how it reads, how Jesus is descending down into Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, and, and, and they begin to cry out to him, and they celebrate the fact of who they see and, and who they worship in Jesus. And, and along the way, we see that immediately Jesus experiences they began to experience some opposition. And it says the Pharisees, they cried out and said, Teacher, you need to quiet the crowd. All this noise, you need to make sure that you quiet. Why the celebration? Quiet the crowd. And I think that in that, I think that we together today can see and understand that there's that place in our life that that even today that our true heart, our total surrender to a life of worship and our celebration, our praise, and again, I think that you can see there's certainly opposition that we encounter. So I don't think that we are, I, I don't think we've been set alone to ourselves and we are the only person or the only generation that has experienced opposition to worship. Because there's certainly enemies that are out there that are enemies of praise. They're enemies of worship. And, and I, want, I want to show you what they are. I think that we can see them evident in our own person this morning in terms of where we are. The first one I want you to see is the me God. See, I, I think we can see this morning that every one of us, the thing that we have to overcome in terms of resistance, what opposes true worship in our lives is the me God. What do you mean? I'm saying the, the God that sometimes I reserve for me. It's the worship of self. You say, I don't really do that. Oh, I, I'd consider that maybe all of us deal with this opposition in some ways if we consider the fact that pride some kind can stand, sometime can stand in the way of true worship. Our own selfish pride, look, our own dignity 
can stand in the way. In other words, we're more concerned with ourselves than we are our worship. I think that if we're not careful, we consider our prominence as something that is needed and necessary. But the reality is, as long as you're in the way, as long as pride stands in the way, as long as we allow dignity, it will resist a true life of worship, a true life that adores and honors and praises the one who we serve. Does that me, God? We know that pride causes destructiveness in our, in our own life and in our own walk. But if we're not careful, we can allow that to drive us away from Him. See, we can allow the dignity of who we are to disregard the glory of who He is. If we're not careful, we can allow dignity to keep us at a place that we never truly lay our lives down. We, we allow our dignity to disregard the power and the might and the goodness and the grace of God. And if we're not careful, that dignity will lead us to a place that we'll deny. Really, we live in denial of just how good God has been to us. We can live at that place that we deny really how much he's done for us, what he's done for us. So all of us can probably see that me God. Secondly, I think there are other gods. And we know that. We've seen that throughout history. Sometimes we only consider other gods as those things that we may build an idol to or we relate it to the golden calf at that we see. But again, we know the commands from the beginning. God said to Moses, he said, you make sure that there are no other gods that are put before me. But, but do we know today that sometimes the resistance of, of who he is, sometimes we see that in our own life because we see there are lots of gods out there that are begging for, I said it last week, our attention. They're begging for our acknowledgement. There, there are a lot of things out there that will cause you to, if we're not careful, we'll miss out on true worship. And we'll worship things that don't matter even tomorrow. Boy, haven't we experienced that through this crisis? There are a lot of things that people have held in such value, held such high, in high esteem. And in this time, we've realized a lot of those things don't even matter. Found out a lot of time, a long time ago that a lot of things that we think matter so much, when you face tragedy and crisis, man, those things are not as important as you thought they were. And I pray that even through this time that we recognize all those other gods that clamor for our attention, that clamor for our energy, that clamor for our resources, all those things that want us to acknowledge them. God help us to see there's only one true God. And he's the one that is certainly deserving and worthy of our worship. But then I think that evident from this story, I think that we can see this last one. And that's the one, again, if I can use it again, that's the one that's kind of tricky. Because the last one I want you to consider is, is the religious gods. See, the religious gods seemingly look right, sound right, but again, really and truly, they will pull your attention away from him and actually set your attention on your own efforts. That's those religious gods. It's the piety. It's the people that maybe think just what they do is their own act of, of just simply pleasing God and they think that somehow they appease God through their own religious activity. Those religious gods that we see show up in the form of the Pharisees right here when they say, teacher, you need to rebuke them. Why all this noise? Why all the clamor? Why all this rejoicing? Jesus said, they, if they're quiet, they, the earth itself will split open with praise. See, there are plenty of religions, there are plenty of practices out there that will usurp the worship or take away from the worship of the one that's the only one that's really worthy that they're forms of religion that deny the power of God. And, 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 and they would rather, really, the, the, the religious gods are those that they would rather us not make such a fuss about Jesus. That they would rather us not be a people who make such a big deal. Why such a big deal 
when we get together. Why such a big deal when we live our lives out there sometimes, maybe even on our own? Why crank up the radio so loud? Why make such a noise about Jesus? So I think these live under the disguise sometimes of what is called reverence. But I'm here today to tell you that when Jesus shows up, listen, when Jesus shows up, there's not just quiet. It's not just always orderly. See, I found out there are people that would shush the noise, if I can say it that way. They'd rather, they'd rather you not make such a big deal about Jesus. These Pharisees, they still, I think that, that spirit is still alive and well today. I found that there are people that are a lot more in love with their style and their preferences than they are about Jesus. That may be kind of a strong statement there, but I'm just saying that I've found that there are a lot of people that in their their form of of practice, even of religion, even Christianity, I've found that there are a lot of people that that they get more upset about us changing a style or trying to be more relevant than they are about true worship. I said it the other day, I heard a gentleman on the radio and he said, you know, give me that old time religion. And I screamed at the radio, maybe that's the problem with you. Maybe you failed to realize it's not about a religion, it's about a relationship. And Jesus wants to be alive and well and moving and breathing in your life. So I think it's very important that we understand that, that we, when Jesus comes near, we, 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 we must make sure that we don't have these avenues that resist or oppose, these, what I call these avenues of avoidance. Because here's what they look like today in terms like this, like contemporary versus traditional. Again, I think that we see that there are avenues that sometimes that serve to cause us to avoid true worship. And, you know, it can be little things like it's too soft or too loud or it's too light or it's too dark or it's too fast or too slow. Uh, Look, all these things really trying to keep us trying to keep us from allowing him to come near to where we are. See, true worship is to draw you close, to draw you close to him. See, I think as surely as we neglect the why as to our worship, it's certainly possible that we become enamored with our style of worship and begin to worship the practice of worship rather than the worship of the Lord. Man, I, I don't want to worship worship. I want to make sure my life, I want to make the noise, not because I like the noise, but I want to make the noise because of his goodness and his grandeur, his, his glory. And I've found in times, I, I know that, there are times that our difference in worship, see, there's, there's really no difference in, in sometimes our, our worship of worship than, than people who confuse the fact that we're, we're not worshiping a place. Uh, I've known through the years, you know, I, I know there needs to be certainly respect that is given, but I've known that, that, that there are people who will, who will look at a church building just like this and they they, they make sure that they respect the place. It's almost as if they move respect to a place of worship. But how many of you know it's not about the worship of the place, it's about the one who sanctifies the place. It's about the one who makes this place special. And again, thank God for the privilege we have to come together. And I can't wait for that. But see, I found out that where Jesus shows up, where Jesus is, here's what we celebrate. Watch with me. Real quick, I want you to see it. See, where Jesus is, there is hope. Where Jesus is, there is hope. See, even though at this time there's hope, even with some of those who are rejoicing so, we find that maybe their hope was a little misguided. Maybe they, they were only caught up in the earthly realm, that thinking that Jesus was about to establish a kingdom even just of this world. But 
How many of us know that Jesus actually, his hope was beyond this world? Hope is a wonderful thing, and we find that certainly in Jesus and his presence in our life. The reason we worship is we celebrate our hope. It's been said that man can live about 40 days without food, about, I don't think I could live that long without it. I'm just saying that, you know, 40 days without food, they they tell me that a man can live about three days without water. A man can live about eight minutes without air, but it's been said a man can't live one second without hope. And I believe that's a reality for all of us. Isn't it good that we find that we celebrate one who shows up in our life, who brings us hope? Bible makes it very clear that we, that we celebrate the Savior and our faith in Him. Uh, Hebrews 11.1 1 says our, our faith is a substance of things that we hope for, the evidence of things not seen, hope that is very real in our life. I think it's something we, that we see even as we read through the book of Job, you find that there a man who has found himself definitely in a place of crisis, he finds that his hope is in his God, in the Lord, his God. And I just encourage you to find that this hope is the anchor of our soul, that Jesus, his presence, he's the anchor of our life, that we don't live our lives as people that ha- have, have ignorance that is working and operating. We know that he is the hope of our soul. We know that as long as he is with us, there is hope. Again, I started off with this, that even in the midst of this crisis, our reality is our hope is real. Our hope is that we know that we serve a God and a Savior who will work this thing. And we believe that God can do something even greater and better, even through this difficult season that we're in right now. Look, Romans 5, 5 says, hope does not disappoint. Hope is a reality. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13, it says that these things remain, faith, hope, and love. The greatest being love. But aren't you glad that hope is real in our life? I'm just thinking this morning that there's a place in our life that we see the celebration. Why do they celebrate Jesus? Because in the middle of their crisis, in the middle of their oppression, in the middle of their darkness is Jesus, the Lord of glory, the Savior of the world, and he shows up in our life to make sure that we understand that he is able to lead us even through the darkest times. I think it's interesting when you read the Gospels that you don't see the word hope. You hardly even see the word. Only a few times is the word hope even written by the writers of the Gospels. But it's evident to me that the reason is because their hope was there with them. He was right there in their midst. And they didn't speak of something that they held on to just only in their future. But he's right here. Because where Jesus is, there's hope. I just encourage you today that you're a follower of Jesus. You've called on him. He's the savior of your life. You find in him where Jesus is, there's hope. And you live with that every day. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But aren't you glad that you don't have to defer hope, that you can know the reality of his presence right now? Watch. Second thing is this. Where Jesus is, there's peace. There's that peace that the Bible speaks of that passes all understanding. In Philippians 4, we know that we can make our request known to God, but verse 7 says that God will give us a peace that will guard our hearts and our minds. In the middle of the turmoil, Jesus shows up and brings us peace. He makes us sure, makes sure that we know his word, that we hold on to his promise, and that we know that his truth will endure. There's a peace. Jesus said, all these things I've spoken to you. He said to his disciples, he said, all these things I've said to you, that you can have peace. And I just encourage you to find that as a reality in your life this morning, that the peace of God will surpass all the things that trouble you right now. But watch, it goes further. Uh, We can see this morning that there's a place that when Jesus shows up, and we see it in this story that we read this morning, Jesus is coming down toward Jerusalem across the Mount of Olivets, and the Bible says that as he looks down, look, that he looks down over the city of Jerusalem, and look, and he weeps. Why? Because his heart is filled with compassion. Aren't you glad that Jesus cares? Aren't you glad that regardless of where we are right now in life, that Jesus is willing to get down in the middle 
of our mess with us because he cares. First Peter said we can, we can cast all of our care upon him because we know that he cares for us. And I just encourage you to find that as a reality in your life this morning. I think it's so exemplary right here that we see that when Jesus, as he's coming into the city of Jerusalem, his own people, the Bible says he wept over it. We know their fatal mistake, looking at it from this side, we know the fatal mistake is that they rejected the Savior. They rejected Him. And I'm encouraging you today, don't reject Him. Don't deny Him. You just keep celebrating. You just keep worshiping. You keep finding yourself at a place that you just keep praising Him right in the middle of the darkness. Don't miss out on the one who is here to take care of all of your burdens. I'm so glad today to know that I don't serve a Savior who's here to condemn me. He's here to degrade me. He's here to send me down the road. I'm so glad today to know that Jesus is one who has come to my life to make sure that, that I know that He cares for me right in the middle of my distress. I'm just glad today to know that in this moment that Jesus looks on us and he's moved with compassion. Look, this last thing with me, and I'm going to finish. See, where, where, there's, where, where Jesus is, where Jesus shows up, look, thank God today that we have this hope. Thank God today that we have this peace. Thank God today that we know that we have the eye and the heart and the love of Jesus. Aren't you glad today that he has compassion for you? Aren't you glad that his heart is moved with what bothers you? The Bible says that everything that happens to your life, he's aware of. It says if he cares for the, the sparrows of the air and the lily of the field, don't you know that he cares about you? But I want to end with this. I want you to go back with me and consider what must have been happening on that Palm Sunday where Jesus is ascend, uh, descending down into the city of Jerusalem and they're making such a fuss. <laughs> the rejoicing is at a, I mean, I mean, it's at a place that it's at a pinnacle. Maybe the city as he's coming down the villages of Bethpage and Bethany, it says the place has gone wild. To the point that there's such noise that religion's standing around saying, shh, don't be so crazy. Don't act so foolish. But again, on this side, we understand, don't we? We understand the one who is showing up in our life. We know the one who has come to make us whole again. And his name is Jesus. I'm telling you, there's not one thing that has affected your life that he's not aware of. There's not one thing that's so out of control. I love the picture. The Bible says that Jesus said, you go get the colt that has never been ridden before. Why? Because in that moment, Jesus is expressing his authority. And he said to them, he said, you can know one thing. It may seem like there are certain places in your life that are gone crazy and out of control, but they will subdue to the authority of the Savior. And I just encourage you to find that in this time in your life that you find this reality. While the noise, while the fuss, because we know the one who our heart loves. And guess what? He loves me. That's why I rejoice. That's why I worship. That's why I celebrate. That's why the lights. That's why the music. That's why all the noise. That's the reason we're so crazy about him. It's because we know what he's done for us. I know as you're worshiping there in your home this morning. Again, I can't wait for the time that we get back together. But I want you just to take a moment just to stop everything in your mind and and make sure we turn off everything, all the news and everything we hear, turn it off and make sure you set your mind on him because you can know one thing, that he will come and meet you there. He said it to the disciples, he said, where two or three are gathered, I'll meet you there. If you don't know him today as your savior, you call on him. Ask him right where you are. You say, Pastor. Eric, I don't know you. You may be out there and you may not even know me, but let me tell you one thing. If he cares for me, he'll care for you. If he could love me, he loves you. And he's concerned with where you are. 
So in this time of distress and trouble, you find yourself at a place. And if you'll welcome him in, if you'll invite him in, look, he won't just come as company. Just stay for a while and leave. He'll come and stay. He'll come and stay with where you are. And he'll live this thing out with you because he cares for everything in, in your life. Call on his name. Father, I thank you today that as we've come together this time of worship, Lord, and I know the method is different today, but Lord, I thank you that we can come and adore you. And in our family units and in our places where we maybe have gathered, we stand before you today and we honor you. We celebrate the fact that we know the Savior. And even though we're in a place that we're not sure how things are going to play out, we hold on to one thing. Our reality is that we know that there's a God in heaven. We know that you care for us. And even now, you're working a greater good. You're working things for good. So we place our trust in you. I ask you for our family, our friends, all of those that are touched through this house, through this place of fellowship. I pray that the light shines brighter than ever before. I pray, God, that they find a place of refuge and protection and safety greater than ever before. Be with them. Speak to them encourage their hearts again we thank you that you love us and you'll love us right through the middle of this crisis to a greater day be with them we pray again i thank you for every family every friend i pray that you speak to them today encourage their hearts and let them see thank you lord that you care for us speak to them to pray i pray Speak to them. Can I sing this with you? I know my voice is not the one you want to hear. Can you say, all my life, you have been, been faithful. faithful. All, all my life, life, you have been so, so, so good. With every breath that, that I am made. I will sing of the goodness of God. I love you so much. We're praying with you and for you. And again, you just know that there's a God in heaven that if I love you, he loves you more. I encourage you. Again, call the phones. Interact on Facebook. Reach out. If there's need in your life, we want to pray and believe God with you. We love you. Again, if I... Don't see you until I'll see you Wednesday night, 7 p.m. We'll do Home Matters. Again, he will lead you through this time. God bless you. We love you. See you then.